Over the years, Claude Anne Gauthier has woven a solid relationship with the inhabitants of the Entremo Reserve, and in particular with their traditional chief, Prince Tsimandendri, whose village is found at the end of a long track of red laterite. Claude Anne is going to ask the prince for authorization to approach the crown Sifaka she has been studying for 20 years. These big limios, emblematic of Madagascar, are under the protection of the Sakalavan villagers. The presence of the limios interests the scientists because very few primates adapt to the complex environment of the mangroves. We welcome you with open arms, on condition you accept our customs. My ancestor was a prince with a particular bond with the Sifaka. Cutting wood with his axe, he wounded himself badly. It was an open fracture. A couple of Sifaka saw my grandfather, who was lying unconscious in a pool of blood. They came down from their tree. They held his leg tight. They found leaves and chewed them. More leaves and chewed them. My ancestor regained consciousness. After he healed, he called the Sifaka. And they came back. So that's my story with the Sifaka. We Sakalavans respect the Limus. We don't eat them. It's taboo. It's forbidden. They're not scared of humans because we don't hunt them. They're peaceful because we protect them. To observe the behavior of the crown Sifaka, first you must go to their sleeping area in dry forest, then head to the middle of the mangroves where they spend most of their time. Ranger Zapilaza Zhao Zandri knows where to find them. There are the Sifaka. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, there. That's the group sleeping area. Over there, there's a little one. It was born in 2019. It's a baby. Just like every morning, they're here. Then, they go to eat in the mangroves. What time? At 10 o'clock, they leave to look for food. Mm -hmm. In the evening, around 5 o'clock, they come back to sleep. A long time ago, we protected nothing. Mm -mm. In the Sifaka, you see there, there were seven groups. Mm -mm. Then they were hunted by men. There were only three groups left. When they saw people, they ran away. Men hunted them with dogs, chased them and shot them with blowpipes. The preservation of this forest is essential, and protecting the animals is fundamental. For these are living creatures, like us humans. On Madagascar, there are a hundred species of lemur, which came from Africa around 65 million years ago. 
they crossed the sea on mats of vegetation at a time when the ocean currents were favorable. The crown sifaka are the last large lemurs on the island. Locally, they're called sifakas. The protected zone of Antrema is the reservoir of the species, with a population of around 700 sifakas. They're strong. Yes, they are. Uh -huh. There you can hear the warning call of the sifakas. It's a kind of cough, an explosive sort of call. That's no doubt because we're here. And the others reply with a softer noise. Here we're in a protected zone. It's a special site because in some ways it shelters the last large population of crowned safaka. And the safaka are really considered as an incarnation of the ancestors. So from that, we are in an extraordinary place because there is a traditional culture of preservation present here. Because to conserve the sifaka also means to preserve the other lemurs as well as all the biodiversity and all the life here at Anchema. So there we see a sifaka using rest time to clean itself. As we see there, it puts its paw in its mouth, uses the dental comb of its teeth to scrape out dirt, and as well uses its tongue to remove bits that are stuck. On its rear paws, at the place of the index finger, there's a fine nail which allows it to clean some parts of its anatomy, like, for example, its ear. Lemurs clean each other. It's a social act which nurtures the bond, keeps up contact. This happens in the family. It doesn't happen with other groups, so it indicates what proximity there is between individuals. The crowned sifaka are the only lemurs who feed in the mangrove. They eat leaves, sprouts, and flowers of the mangrove, which are, however, rich in tannin and hard to digest. This lets us think they have an adapted diet. The specialty in terms of movement of the sifaka is that they have a jump called bouncing. This means that they use their thighs to give a push at the start and to leap from tree to tree. They can make jumps over 10 meters long. You can see them do that. When you have this kind of bouncing movement, you can flee at any time, but also get to safe zones in the mangroves that no one else can get to. So the mangrove is a very, very protective space for the lemurs. The last large lemurs of Madagascar have found in the mangroves a place where there is security, rest, and food. They have been able to use the unknown resources of these forests. The Madagascan mangroves offer richness, the benefits of which the Madagascans are rediscovering. Thought to be kingdoms haunted by the ghosts of ancestors, they were once feared and respected. Then, under modern economic pressure, they have been despoiled and mistreated. Today, they are reconciled with men.
They bring new wealth to villagers that are learning how to manage their resources. They offer shelter to a myriad of species. And they are formidable carbon traps which help the whole planet. In Madagascar, like everywhere else in the world, these forests, treasure chests of diversity, should be better known and better protected.